Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get Dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. Who do you think of as to who are some of the greatest NFL players that wore number 55 on their jersey? In this episode, we discuss the greatest players that wore jersey number 55 and give you a top 10 list. And it's coming up in just one moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. This is your host, Darren Hayes, and we are podcasting from America's North Shore, bringing you the memories of the gridiron, one day at a time. So in taking the snap from the SportsHistoryNetwork.com and handing off to PigskinDispatch.com, let's go no huddle through today's football history headlines. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com, and welcome once again to the Pig Pen for this bonus edition, Jerseys Football by Numbers of the NFL, and we are at jersey number 55, and this is just a great time to talk about some great football players that uh, were that number 55, the double nickel, and we have the Pro Football Hall of Fame giving us seven names of players that wore jersey number 55 that are in the Canton, Ohio Museum, and they are Junior Seau, Derek Brooks, Chris Hamburger, Tom Fears, Jason Taylor, Johnny Blood McNally, and Steve Owen. All some very good players all in their own right. We're going to throw a little bit of a stipulation in here because three of these players only wore that jersey number for one year. Jason Taylor, you know, the great Miami Dolphins uh, linebacker, outside edge rusher, you know, only wore that for one year season uh, wearing number 55. Of course, you know, we know him with wearing a different number. We're not 99 in the Miami Dolphins, but he did wear uh, 55 for one season when he was with the Washington Redskins in 2008. And, you know, that that year, he had a decent year, uh, but he only he put up uh, what was it uh, three and a half sacks so you know not really his best year of his career so only having it one year but he was a six-time pro bowler three-time all pro um you know most of the time he was 99 which i'm sure we'll be talking a lot about him when we get there so i'm going to put him on standby uh johnny blood mcnally we've talked a lot about this guy he had numbers changing like crazy had an interesting story to his name if you go back and uh, listen to that warren rogan story uh when we had him on for that number uh you'll find a very fascinating story johnny blood only wore it for one season though and so we're going to also put him on standby probably not going to make our list. And Steve Owen, the great uh, coach of the New York Giants, was a good player too. Uh, He only wore it for one season too, wore the number 55. And that was in uh, 1931 with the Giants. He wore the, you know, about probably six different numbers with the Giants as a sort of a player and then a a player coach and then just coaching. So he's probably not going to make it either. But our other four Hall of Famers definitely have a great chance. And the first one we're going to talk about is Junior Seau, wore number 55 for 20 seasons. And I'm just going to read you our bio that we had for him on his January 19th birthday. You know, he was born in San Diego, California. California. Junior Sayer was the outstanding linebacker from Southern Cal that rece- was received in this world uh, on J- January 19, 1969. Sayo played an amazing 20 seasons in the NFL, and he was a first draft in the first round by his hometown San Diego Chargers in 1990, according to his bio on the Pro Football Hall of Fame. In 1992, he was voted the NFL Defensive Player of the Year. And Junior was an All-Pro eight times and played in 12 Pro Bowls. In 1994, he led the Chargers to their first and only Super Bowl appearance in Junior Sale was enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2015. You know, just talking about you know some of his statistics, uh, they're just fantastic. He uh, 
had, like we said, 12 Pro Bowls in 20 years, six All Pros. I can remember, you know, in his first couple seasons, he was just all over the field. Every single tackle, it seemed, for the San Diego Chargers was, you know, Junior Seo on tackle. Junior Seo helped on that one. Sacked by Junior Seo. <laughs> just tremendous, tremendous player. Uh, with a high motor, we lost him way too early at a, you know, an er- a young age. Uh, pr- part of that uh, concussion uh, protocol that's being like he was sort of that guy that he do- was the first to donate his body to. Get, you know, do some studies on what concussions were doing to NFL players and did a, did a lot for it. But he played from San Diego from 1990 all the way to 2002, played with the Dolphins 2003, 2004, 2005, then was a New England Patri- Patriot 2006 through 2009, and, uh, you know, played in uh, the Super Bowl with them, I believe. Um, uh, maybe, maybe he did. No, they had to have a Super Bowl in or somewhere during those years. But he was just a great player everywhere he went. Touched a lot of lives. You know, everybody says what a, a great uh, person he was too. But unfortunately, you know, had that uh, brain injury. Uh, just uh, made his life shortened. He had 56 and a half sacks in his career. 1,522 solo tackles. And this player is definitely one that's going on our list, especially with those 20 seasons and 20 productive seasons. He's number one on our list of greatest number 55s to ever play the game. Probably, you know, not far behind him, a close second is Derek Brooks, who wore that number 55 for 14 seasons in the National Football League. And all he did was you know, make it to the Hall of Fame. He was an 11-time Pro Bowler, five times as an All-Pro. And wow, what a gifted player he was. And we're going to read you uh, some from his bio in our fo- in our. April 18th edition football head history headlines. So he's born April 18th, 1973, Pensacola, Florida. He was Florida State's Mr. Everything linebacker. That's the day he was born. And Brooks helped lead the Knowles to their first ever national championship in 1993 as a two-time unanimous first-team All-American in both 93 and 94. He guided Florida State to victories in four consecutive bowl games, including the 18-16 to win over Nebraska in the Orange Bowl for that national title. You know, the footballfoundation.org website says Brooks was a finalist for the Buckus, Rotary Lombardi and FWAA Defensive Player of the Year in 93 and 94 while playing for College Football Hall of Fame coach Bobby Bowden. Derek finished his collegiate career with 274 tackles, 8 and a half sacks, 5 interceptions and was named MVP of the Senior Bowl. His number 10 jersey was retired at Florida State and he's a member of both the Seminoles and the Co-Sida Academic All-America Sports Hall of Fame. So he was a smart one too. And Derek Brooks received the great honor of being selected for inclusion in the College Football Hall of Fame 2016, and he was picked in the first round of the 1995 NFL Draft by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Spent his entire 14-year career with the franchise. You know, like we said, an 11-time Pro Bowl selection. Credited with never missing a game during his pro career as he led the Bucs to victory in Super Bowl 37, 2003. He was a 2014 Pro Football Hall of Fame inductee, and he had his number retired by Tampa Bay as well as a member of the team's ring of honor. So college at Florida State, his number's retired. Tampa Bay retired his number 55. You know, that puts in some very high company and very high praise, and that is why Derek Brooks is our second player on our number 55 top 10 list of NFL players that's going to go in there. Now, you know, Chris Hamburger's another great Hall of Famer that we want to talk about. Now, Chris played linebacker for the Washington Redskins for 14 seasons. He was honored at the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton with a bronze bust, and he was selected as a first-team All-Pro in the span of four times in five seasons during the 1970s, and he played in nine Pro Bowl games. You know, just uh, this guy was all over the place. Four times he was an All-Pro. He came in with Washington in 1965, stayed with the Redskins till through the 1978 uh, NFL season. He was a right linebacker that whole entire career. And you know, too bad we don't have tackles uh, statistics for him, but he had 19 interceptions from his linebacker uh, position. Two of those he took back to the, for touchdowns. He had 347 total uh, return yards. And uh, he is also going to be, he's going to be our third one on our list. You know, that's just a brilliant career that he had. 
Our fourth Hall of Famer wore that jersey 55 for five seasons. He was born December 3rd, 1922, Guadalajara, Mexico. Tom Fears was born and went to be on to be a great end at both Santa Clara and UCLA during his college years. And you know, the, according to the footballfoundation.org, Fears was on Santa Clara's team when he was a sophomore and then left there to serve in the U.S. Air Force. After his military stint, he followed his brother to UCLA, where during the 1946 junior season, the Bruins went through the regular season undefeated as a nation's fourth-ranked team. UCLA was an exciting team as they ran a triple pass play, a forward pass, then a lateral, then a lateral. A case to Baldwin, to Fears, to Clements. The National Football Foundation selected Tom Fears to enter into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1976. And after graduation, Fears joined the Los Angeles Rams as a defensive player, but was quickly converted back to the offensive side of the ball. As a professional, Tom led the league in receiving in three straight years from 1948 all the way to 1950, uh, per the Pro Football Hall of Fame website. Fears also had a big game in 1950 for the division title contest when he caught three touchdown passes. You know, wow, that's a great one. Uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame enshrined Tom Fears in 1970. And boy, what a career he did have. You know, he ended up having 400 receptions during his career, 5,397 yards, 38 touchdowns during that span. And, you know, at first he was a defensive player. Can you imagine that, the losing out to, to that great defensive player by having him on the offense side of the ball? You know, or I'm sorry, having him on the defense side by losing on all that offense. Uh, he was one Pro Bowl, one time as an All-Pro, uh, but he probably didn't get enough credit for the great player that he was with those Rams teams, 1948 all the way to 1956. Uh, it was just that very prolific Rams offense they enjoyed back then. Um, you know, who can say enough about him? But he wore the 55 for uh, four seasons. And that was his first four seasons, 1948 through 1951, 55. Then, of course, he donned the number 80 for the Rams from 52 through 56 seasons. So, uh, but that was when they had that numbering rule, I believe it was like a 51 52, where, uh, you know, before that, you, uh, 55 could be an eligible receiving number, but he had to change his number to number 80. So we are going to give him credit for that because he was definitely very significant in NFL, NFL history on that great offense. And we are going to put him as our fourth number 55 on our top 10 list. Now, let's get into some players that are not yet uh, in the Hall of Fame yet. Maybe they're still not, they're still playing or maybe don't have enough time if he's retired. But how about Terrell Suggs? the great outside linebacker you know, of the Baltimore Ravens. He has played, he played from 2003 all the way to 2019 uh, in the NFL. 2018 was his last year with Baltimore. 2019, he played with Arizona a little bit, Kansas City, Chiefs for a little bit. But 16 years with Baltimore, um, it had that 55, that whole span there. Arizona and Kansas City, he'd had different numbers. But uh, he's a definitely one you think about for number 55. 139 career sacks, seven times in the Pro Bowl, one time as an All-Pro, two Super Bowl championship rings, and he was the 2003 AP Defensive Rookie of the Year. Just a fantastic player and uh you know, Terrell Suggs he, he was a beast and he was built like a you know a brick outhouse and just uh played like a madman and was definitely all over the field uh played havoc on my my Pittsburgh Steelers uh quarterback you know Ben Roethlisberger got to know Suggs pretty well because he was usually laying on top of him with some some tremendous sacks but a very hard hitter uh had the nicknames of T Sizzle and also Hacksaw. <laughs> you know you got a great player there. But Terrell Suggs is another one. He's going to go fifth on our uh, top 10, number 55. He's wearing that for 16 seasons at 55 jersey. Now, another player we want to talk about, Wayne Walker. And Wayne Walker is definitely an interesting subject to talk about in NFL history. He was another linebacker, and he played with the Detroit Lions from 1958 all the way to 1972. Nice long career. Wore that 55 his entire career there. He was a three-time Pro Bowl selection. Once as an All-Pro. And he had... uh, you know, just some great games um, that he played. But he also kicked uh, field goals and extra points in, in uh, 
besides being a linebacker. So a very interesting two-way player uh, back in an era where you didn't really think about them having too much of a two-way player. But, you know, linebacker and kicker, interesting combination. Uh, Not sure if he's going to make our list, but definitely somebody that we want to think about uh, at the end. And uh, how about Leroy Jordan is another great player in NFL history we want to try to remember here as a substantial player. Another great linebacker, played with the Dallas Cowboys from 1963 all the way to 1976, 55 the entire way, uh, five times in the Pro Bowl, once as an All-Pro, one time as a Super Bowl champion, and he had a 30 he had 32 interceptions during his career. Three of those he took back for touchdowns, 472 yards of return yards on those uh, great uh, picks that he had of quarterbacks. And he's another one that I think I think he's got a good chance. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put uh, Leroy Jordan on there because he was a tremendous player, a great linebacker, made a difference for his team, wore that jersey 55 for 14 seasons. You know, Lance Briggs is another great player that we definitely want to talk about you know he was a linebacker Chicago Bears his entire career number 55 with the Bears 2003 all the way to 2014 seven Pro Bowls one time as an all pro he had 16 interceptions during his career five of those he took back for touchdowns 256 yards uh had 15 sacks during his career mostly a coverage and uh you know tackling linebacker 1181 combination tackles 944 of those were solo so he was a hitting machine and uh, definitely a force to be reckoned with on that Monsters of the Midway in the new era. Uh, you know, teamed up with uh, Brian Erlacher, who we talked about a couple episodes ago. Um, yeah, Lance Briggs is another one. I think we're going to put him on our, our list, too, as our seventh player going in. And uh, here's one of my favorites on this list, Joey Porter. You know, great outside linebacker, and particularly most of the time for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Came in with the Steelers in 1999. Played with them through 2006, and then uh, three years with Miami, and final two years with the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, but he is a four-time Pro Bowler, one time as an All-Pro, Super Bowl champion with the Steelers, All Hall of Fame uh, team of the 2000s. Um, and those great uh, Steeler defenses that uh, you know Bill Cowher was charged with most of the time, and you know, a little bit of uh, Mike Tomlin. But boy, were they they uh, great. Uh, team to be watching and you know he had uh, 689 total tackles combination 516 of those were solo and but his sacks numbers are where he really came out 98 sacks in his career uh, and 25 forced fumbles just uh, a tremendous player and I think he is going to go on as our eight number eight player on our list because he was just that substantial and that special to it and uh, you know Max Baum is another one I want to talk about. You know, another great uh, defender that played linebacker. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles, 1960 all the way to 1965. Then played with the Rams, 66 through 1970. Missed the season as when he retired. And the Washington Redskins uh, coerced him out of retirement in 1974. He played a few games for them. Uh, with them. He made it to nine Pro Bowls, two times as an All-Pro, won an NFL championship. Uh, But one thing against him is he did not wear it his entire career, but he had 11 seasons that he did wear that number. And uh, I think uh, he's going to go in as our our ninth player because, you know, he is that substantial of a player that uh, just that good. And another one I like to talk about is Willie McGinnis. Um, just uh, what can you say about Willie McGinnis? You know, another great uh, defensive end linebacker. You know, that edge rusher type. 55 his entire career. Uh, he had 86 sacks in his career. 16 forced fumbles. 581 solo tackles. Twice he made it to the Pro Bowl. Three times as a Super Bowl champion. Uh, he came in with the New England Patriots in 1994. Stayed with them all the way to 2005 and in three final seasons, 2006 through 2008, with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, just a tremendous career. 55 his entire career. And, uh, wow, you know, there's 10 spots to fill. But I can't see him not being on there. But um, we're going to hold off on him for a second. But let's talk about, you know, Scott Studwell, another great number 55. And these 55s, these linebackers, that is definitely a linebacker number. You know, he played linebacker for the Minnesota Vikings from 1977 all the way to 1990. And uh, 55 his entire career. Again, 11 interceptions, uh, no touchdowns off of those. But another, we don't have tackle statistics uh, statistics for back then. Uh, but another great player. 
Again, uh, not sure that he is going to make it on there either, but put him on standby. We'll remember his name, Scott Studwell, and uh, definitely a substantial player. Um, let's talk about a uh, couple more here. Doug Buffon, uh, Chicago Bears, 1966 all the way to 1979. Uh, 24 interceptions his career, played linebacker for the Bears, 211 uh, yards off those interceptions. Probably is on the outside looking in on our list, but substantial. Uh, E.J. Holub, you know, another great linebacker. You know, it's linebacker number 55, you know, the double nickel. He played center a little bit too. He played 1961 uh, for the Dallas Texans, came in, played two seasons there, and they converted over to the, uh, over to the Kansas City Chiefs 1963. Stayed in Kansas City till 1970. Uh, last three seasons as a center, his first uh, seven seasons as a linebacker, and uh, both playing the left and the right side. Five Pro Bowls, two times as All-Pro, Super Bowl championship, three AFL championships, some great numbers there, and he is going to be some strong consideration uh, of making our list also. Well, we got some definitely contenders. Um, John Kolb is a, another great player somebody that i'm very familiar with uh you know another great uh, steelers dynasty uh, tackle that uh, played a little bit of center at the end of his career uh pittsburgh steeler from 1969 all the way to 1981 four super bowl championships um just a, another great player and he's he's another one i think we got to have consideration of here uh for this last spot and there's many other great players, you know, Brian Kelly and Dan Connors and Jim LeClaire, Jamie Sharper, uh, Frank LeMaster, John Abraham, Carl Eckern, Matt Millen. Uh, you know, let's talk about Millen a little bit. Let's talk, see what his career held for him. But he was a, a great uh, Oakland Raider linebacker, uh, 1980 all the way to 1988 uh, with the Raiders, two years with the 49ers. Uh, and then Washington Redskins' his final year of 1991. Um, but he, you know, 55 was not his number his entire career. Uh, M- Millen worked for nine seasons, though. And, but, you know, what can you say about this guy? We don't have a lot of statistics other than his interceptions. They didn't have to tackle uh, percentages back there. But one Pro Bowl, four-time Super Bowl champion, your 49ers and the Raiders uh, getting those Super Bowl titles. And maybe one with Washington, too. I'm not, I'd have to look that up. But uh, it's quite possible. So another, we got some ones to consider here. So let's uh, let's do our deliberation here. And we got Wayne Walker, Willie McGinnis, Scott Studwell, E.J. Holub, John Kolb, and Matt Millen. Man, you could take any of those players and be proud that uh, you had them on your top ten list. But I think probably the one that deserves it the most is probably Willie McGinnis because he was definitely a difference maker. And uh, I think I'm going to give that to him. So let's review real quick. We said Junior Sale, Derek Brooks, Chris Hamburger, Tom Fears, uh, Terrell Suggs, Leroy Jordan, Lance Briggs, Joey Porter, Max Bond, and Willie McGinnis, our top 10 greatest number 55s, uh, as I've selected. If you have any problems with that, or maybe somebody I missed, or maybe, hey, I don't think this person should have been on, this other guy should have been, email me at pigskindispatch at gmail.com. In our future podcast, we will be making some corrections and talking about uh, some of these uh, some of your opinions and uh, maybe you'll prove us right and uh, convince me to change my mind on that so again pigskindispatch at gmail.com or email us let us know how we're doing and uh, we hope you enjoyed this another great uh, series in our football by numbers jersey number 55 and boy we are going through this NFL jersey numbers and it has been a lot of fun we hope you're enjoying it we're glad you joined us I uh, hope you join us on pigskindispatch.com to see the list uh, we have them all written down there for you and uh, for all the hall of famers we have them on their birthdays uh we have rec- records of them there too of their great careers just to reiterate and uh you know we thank the the pro football reference for a lot of their numbers and you know sports history network for some of the, the statistics and stuff then uh, the help that we get from all of our members there and uh, no guests today but we do have one coming up you know we have warren rogan coming up with our jersey number 56 in just a few days so make sure you stay tuned for that because that's another exciting number of linebackers and offensive linemen and i think you'll really enjoy that with warren's perspective and us coming up with a top 10 list for the jersey number 56s so till tomorrow everybody have a great gridiron day 
We're taking a peek over at the chains and the down marker. It's fourth and long. We're going to have to punt the ball and get on out of here, but we'll have another series tomorrow for your football history headlines, so be sure to tune in. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleat Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. A special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason and Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. PigskinDispatch.com is a proud affiliate of the Sports History Network, the headquarters of Sports Yesteryear. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One Gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique Unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row 1 catalog and for gallery prints and gift items, plus get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row 1 Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes.